Welcome to another Unity tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how to create a Minimax AI, which is a very simple type of AI, uh, especially useful for board games or uh, turn-based games. And I'm going to show you this with the simple game I created called Rota. So basically it is tic-tac-toe. But you can also win if you have three in a row on the circle. So it doesn't matter where on the circle, three in a row you win. Three on the diagonal you win two. And the other difference is that you have um, three pieces only. And you have to place them at the start. And once every piece is played, you can only move a nail one tile at a time. I did not invent the game. The concept was originally uh, from the Roman era, but uh, the rules were lost in time, at least that's my understanding of it, and were reinvented later. And the reason I chose this game is because it is just a good example on how to apply Minimax to a, to a game. So how does Minimax actually work? So we start with uh, a start state, here we haven't placed anything yet. And from the start state, we um, calculate all the possible moves that we can make. So, for example, if Orange is starting, uh, Orange could place a nail here. And we can mark it down in an abstract way as a new branch of a tree. And we then just continue listing all the possible outcomes and uh, put them into this tree. So for each uh, orange move, we then look at uh, which blue move is possible and we then start uh, adding those moves to the tree as well. We can then assign a label to each uh, row of the tree. So we can say, uh, this is the starting point, this is the orange player, and these are all the orange player's moves. And this is the second player, blue in this case. This, uh, the children of these nodes are all the possible moves of the blue player. So now that we have created the game tree, we want to find the best move. But because we haven't assigned any numbers yet, we are unable to compare the different moves right now. So we have to find an evaluation function, which is up to us to define. So for this game, the evaluation function might look something like this. So we start with the orange player. So if the orange player places down a nail and he has three nails in a row, either the, the diagonals or along the circle, then the evaluation says uh, this is a score of one. Uh, if the blue blue player places down an L and gets three in a row, then uh, it is a minus one, and otherwise it is a zero. So essentially, uh, if orange is winning, he gets a point. If uh, blue is winning, he lo uh, orange loses a point, and otherwise it's just an evaluation of zero. So finding a good evaluation function for this game was very simple. That's because there are not many rules. If you have a more complicated board game or other type of game, then this might become a lot more difficult and um, you also maybe have to try a lot of things to get a good function here. After we have found a good evaluation function, we can apply it to each state of the game tree. So for example, here uh, blue will win if you make this move. Here it is not clear who will win. Here, uh, Orange will win if you make this move. So quite intuitively, Orange will try to pick the best move Orange can make. So in this row, from all the possible moves Orange could make, this one is the best because it ev evaluates to one. And similarly, the best uh, move Blue can make is the one where Orange loses. So this is the one with the negative score. So the best, the best play for blue in uh, when orange has made this move would be one of these two moves here. So that we don't get confused, we call this player here the max player. 
because uh, the player tries to maximize the score and this player here the min player because the player tries to minimize the score and uh, it changes in this case uh, each level because we have two players. So the way the actual algorithm works is that we are doing a depth first search, DFS for short, which means we are going down the tree as far as we can first. So I have deleted the scores so it is more clear what I mean. So the evalu evaluation is done during the depth first search. And uh, we stop either when we hit the maximum search depth or uh, the move is decisive, meaning that the opponent uh, can't possibly make another move anymore. So we start here and we move down the left side of the tree and we will hit this node. And we know already the evaluation is zero and we just keep it in mind that it is zero. And zero is not a decisive move. So we uh, continue expanding the node. And so we will come to the next node and we know from the previous seconds that it is uh, negative one. And uh, because it is decisive and because it is also hitting our maximum depth search, we will keep it here. Then we uh, will go back up and then we will go to the next node, which is the sibling node. And this will evaluate to zero. And in this way, we are continuing in this order to expand the whole tree. After we have checked all the moves in this case, we go back to the node once more. And the minimum of all the children nodes is negative one. So this is what we write into that node. And we continue that process for every node here. And because orange is the maximum player, uh, orange will uh, find the maximum move here. And in this case, this is one. And this one, this here, is the best move for orange. So I hope uh, you could follow the explanation. And I will now show you um, an example implementation in a um, very unpopular engine. So first I have defined a struct that represents the board state. Uh, it has uh, the current color. Whose turn is it right now? Is it blue or orange? It has the state which nails are in which position, positions and uh, also which nails are not yet on the board right now. It has also a few helper functions so I can make a move and change the board state. I can uh, get all the moves that are possible right now and in the current state and I can also check if a player has won the game or not. Here in the actual AI code, um, we have the evaluation function and it works precisely as uh, defined before. So if the, if the max player uh, wins, uh, we assign a score of one. And if the max player is losing, or in other terms, if the other player is, is winning, then we assign a score of negative one. And otherwise we keep the score to zero. Then there's also a method called simulate move, um, which makes a move and copies the state into an array. Um, this is kind of a little bit lazy. Uh, you could also um, make a reverse move function, then you don't need to copy this here. So now how does the actual AI loop work? So uh, we first get all the possible moves and then for each move we uh, expand with our minimax algorithm and we simulate this move so we get a new board state then we decide uh, based on the depth uh, do we minimize or maximize the score and then we evaluate the current state because uh, it could be that the uh, that the game uh, state is decisive orange has won or blue has won so we don't go further down and uh, fetch more moves and then all we do is uh, traverse the tree uh, recursively. We get new moves uh, based on the current uh, board state we calculated here. And uh, we just make a depth first search. And uh, we store the evaluations in uh, our tree. 
And for each level, after we have uh, explored all the possible options in the children, we uh, either minimize the score or we maximize the score. So one problem, as you might imagine with this algorithm, is that it is slow, because we have to visit a lot of um, states. But if it is uh, very cheap to uh, simulate a move, it is not really a problem. But uh, still, uh, one has to be aware of it. So here I have added a counter that just counts uh, how often we visit this function. And then I'm uh, outputting the number of moves we have visited, simulated here in this debug log. So now whenever we make a move, we will see uh, how many moves the AI has simulated. And uh, I have set the search depth to five. So the maximum depth of the tree is five. And uh, when I make a move here, we will see uh, the AI has calculated uh, 27,000 uh, moves. So when we continue the game, um, the number of moves gets smaller. This is because uh, it uh, ends more often in a decisive uh, in a decisive move. So either orange or blue wins. Also, there are less possibilities because um, um, you cannot set uh, any nail any more freely on the board. So that's still a lot of moves, and if you have uh, more complicated rules, it would be uh, even more. So uh, can we reduce that number? And the answer is yes, we can reduce it um, by using um, an addition to the algorithm called alpha beta pruning. So the concept is quite simple. Um, blue in this row tries to minimize all the scores of all the children. And orange at the top tries to maximize the score of all the children. Let's assume for a second that all the scores in these nodes evaluate to 1. And so because blue tries to minimize the score, the evaluation uh, of the parent node is also 1. So we know for certain that orange will take this move here. And the reason is that it wins the game. But the minimax algorithm doesn't necessarily know that there isn't a better score. So there might be a 2, there might be a 3, etc. So it will continue. But we also know now that we will at least get a score of 1. And so the minimum assured score is 1 and this factor is called alpha. So now let's continue our minimax algorithm and depth first search we will arrive at this node here. And let's assume the evaluation of this node is zero. So to recap, blue is, in our example, the minimizing player and orange is the maximizing player. So now because we have evaluated the first move and we know it is uh, zero, we know that the node uh, here, because we are minimizing, is equal or below zero. But because uh, orange is maximizing, we also know that uh, regardless of the outcome, of the actual outcome of this node, uh, we will always choose this node here. And so in turn, we can safely skip evaluating these nodes here. So we refer to this evaluation here as beta, which is the lowest possible score that uh, the minimizing player can reach. So in short, whenever beta is below alpha, we can skip uh, evaluating the moves ahead and the whole subtree. So in principle, this could continue, but we still don't have to check them. So in the code, we are maximizing alpha here and we are minimizing beta here. And once uh, our breaking condition is reached, so alpha is greater or equal to beta, or in you can read it in reverse, beta is smaller equal to alpha, we break out of the loop and we don't consider any future parts of the trees. And when we check again how many moves we are simulating, we will see that it is now only uh, 3500 instead of the 27000. So it is a huge improvement. You can uh, make it even faster by uh, multi-threading for example, so you can divide the tree into multiple parts and let each thread handle one part of the game tree. Um, you just have to be careful of combining them again. 
So we are finished with the minimax algorithm. I just wanted to explain quickly why there weren't too many uploads recently. Uh, this is because I was working on a game and you can find it in the description. Uh, it is a mobile game, also a board game, uses also minimax. And now that is, it is done, I probably have a little bit more time for more tutorials in the near future. So regarding Unity's latest uh, policy, um, the next tutorials are maybe going to be in Godot, but regardless, the topic of the, tutorial, of the tutorials is still going to be the same, so it's going to be more advanced topics. Um, and yeah, that's all I wanted to say to this, and goodbye.